Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the online Elim Gathering. The Word of God comforts and convicts. The Lord encourages us in our troubles and also admonishes us when we have lost our way. In today's readings, the Lord has strong warnings for the worldly. He says in Ezekiel 28 verse 5, Through your great wisdom in trading, you heaped up riches for yourself. Your heart is haughty because of your riches. And in Matthew 19, 23, Jesus tells his disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Hindi masama maging mayaman. Hindi masama na maging maundad ang iyong negosyo. Ang pangalala ng Panginoon ay gamitin ang kayamanan sa mabuti. Huwag maging palalo at patuloy na tumulong sa kapwa. Let us remind ourselves that we are mere stewards of what the Lord gives us. We have to think of the common good and contribute to it. The best way to use our resources is to offer our time, talent, and treasure for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hello and Hello. welcome to the online medium gathering. My name is Barbie. And my name is Monica. And uh, we want to, before we start this online gathering, we want to share with you something that inspires the, the both of us. And I'm pretty sure uh, for most, it's from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, which reads, Cast all your worries on Him. For He cares for you. And because the Lord cares for us all, He gives us the reason to rejoice Amen. in His presence. So, let us come before the Lord and worship Him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
at sumayaw ka naman Basta kumalaw ka na lang Kalimutan lahat Sumayaw ka naman Sumayaw sa Panginoon Kumalaw ito ang panahon Sumayaw sa Panginoon Kumalaw Sumayaw Salamat sa iyong presensya at kami ay natitiwala at umaasa sa iyo. Tapat na nagmamahal at nagkakalinga sa amin. And Lord, we are truly thankful that you are the reason that we live, move, and have our being and our reason to hope and to live and to rejoice. And we thank you that you're always with us. May your presence fill us, Lord God, with your joy today and always. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, let us all welcome Sister Tata C for our teaching. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat to precede him to the other side of the sea while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking to the sea. Greetings, brothers and sisters! Now, have you ever wondered why Peter rushed out to the water when Jesus was coming to them anyway? Weren't the other disciples more careful and discerning by staying and waiting on the boat? You know, I can only think of two things that perhaps prodded him. One is his excitement and deep longing and love for the Lord. And two, his complete trust that with the Lord, Nothing is impossible, even walking on water. Diba? Children are like that. When they see someone they love, they just rush toward them without a care whether they stumble or fall. Or look at babies. They shriek with joy when you throw them in the air, fully confident that their loved one will catch them. Meanwhile, us adults who are watching gasp in fear and hold our breath. Yes, Peter is known to be the impulsive one. Yet, isn't he one of the Lord's intimates? I say intimate and not favorite. Because as one preacher said, the Lord does not have favorites. He has intimates. And Peter is one of them. Peter had the privilege of being in Jesus' inner circle. Now we know from the gospel on Jesus walking on water that Peter actually sank in fear when he saw the waves and called on Jesus to help him. And he was even reprimanded by Jesus after he took hold of him, saying, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? But the beautiful thing here, brothers and sisters, is that Peter experienced something that the other disciples who were just watching and playing it safe did not experience. A faith adventure. Peter stepped into the water, rushed to his beloved, sank in fear, called for help, and was saved. Which one are you? Are you among those who just watch others experience their miracles? Or are you a Peter 
a miracle seeker? When was the last time you stepped out in faith? When was the last time you rushed to Jesus? When was the last time you sank and almost drowned by your fears, your anxieties, your struggles, your problems? Maybe because of your sickness, your obligation, debts and bills to pay, unresolved conflicts, persecutions. And when was the last time you called out to the Lord and said, Lord, save me? When was the last time He also came to save you? redeemed you, rescued you, stretched out His hand to you, provided for you, rescued you, healed you. You know, the Israelites moved forward to their seeming dead end, the Red Sea, and the Lord parted it, telling Moses, Tell the Israelites to move on, raise your staff, and stretch out your hand over the sea. The Lord is telling us, move on. Face your Red Sea and step into the water and see it part. And again, on the way to Jericho, on their final stretch, the Lord told Joshua, As soon as the priests who carry the Ark of the Lord set foot on the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. Joshua 13, 15 goes on to say, now the Jordan at that time is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carry the ark reach the Jordan and their feet touch the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing and it piled up in a heap a great distance away. What a sight to behold, brothers and sisters. What a miracle they witnessed. But would they have seen it had they not set foot on the waters first as the Lord had instructed? Brothers and sisters, step into the water and allow God to manifest His power. You know, I remember years back, Ilium Sabu was inspired to mount a major concert. Worship is a gift of community and we wanted to share this gift. We wanted a big one in a big venue, but we had nothing in our coffers. But the inspiration was very strong to share this gift. And so we gathered servants, we formed committees, we formed a powerful worship team, band and all. And imagine doing that in a big venue. Brothers and sisters, as we practiced, you know, love offerings just came in. The Lord sent in generous people to provide for everything that we needed. And we did mount that concert with a surplus of that. Praise the Lord. And just recently, when we finally decided to resume our face-to-face -face gathering, we were faced with our Red Sea. We wanted to do it hybrid because we wanted the rest who could not go out to continue watching online. But because of the pandemic, for more than two years, our equipment, our our things have not been used a lot of them needed repair or even replacement even the venue was still under repair but we pushed nevertheless and we said the word of god cannot be contained and we have to start doing this we stepped out in faith and started our face-to-face -face gathering and once again brothers and sisters the lord was true to his word he sent once again people who did not even know what we needed but poured in their love offerings and again praise the lord we were able to push through with our face-to-face -face and hybrid gathering with new equipment and they still come pouring in praise the lord so brothers and sisters if you pray for rain bring an umbrella you know i remember this sister of ours co-servant of the lord in the missions sister stella she prayed for a new vehicle so that they can haul their equipment for the mission areas in one take. They did not have any at that time. They just borrowed from, from their son. And while praying for this vehicle, brothers and sisters, she bought a sticker, Stand Up for Jesus. Remember that sticker we would, we would stick at the back of the car? She bought that and said, this is the sticker that I will stick in the vehicle that the Lord will give me. 
end. Hallelujah. The Lord indeed gave her that vehicle. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, do not limit what God can do. Make room for His miracles. You know, it is also worth noting that in their journey, they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant with them. Are you carrying God's covenant with you? His promises to you in your heart? Are you walking in God's presence? His presence opens and clears the path for you so that you can walk through your obstacles. You know, I love this poem. I have quoted this one time in a teaching written in the 1500s by Sir Francis Drake, a navigator and explorer, entitled, Disturb Me, O Lord. And this, this line struck me. It says, Disturb us, O Lord, because we sailed too close to the shore. Stir us, O Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture out into wider seas, where storms show thy mastery, where losing sight of land, we shall find the stars. Ships are made to sail. It shall not have served its purpose if it stays tied to the dock or too afraid of storms. God has a purpose for you and me. Are you sailing out to achieve it? How quick are we like Peter to go to Jesus when he says, Come, that all four-letter powerful word, powerful word, come. The Christian author L.B. Kauman said, Never dread any consequence resulting from absolute obedience to his command. I want to say that again. Never dread any consequence resulting from absolute obedience to His command. When was the last time you rushed to His presence, waves and all? Do we even come to our gatherings with excitement, dropping everything to have a God encounter? Do we come hungry, thirsty and needy for the Lord? Or do we just watch and wait? Let us get our feet wet, brothers and sisters, and pursue, pursue His presence. St. Teresa of Avila reminds us, In the measure you desire Him, you will find Him. Hebrews 4.16 also tells us, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Peter was confident and passionate for the Lord. He didn't just watch and wait. He wasn't lukewarm, which endeared him to Jesus. Revelation 3.16 reminds us, So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You know, going back to Peter and that scene of him in the water, Peter must have been dripping wet when he got to Jesus. He did not mind, nor did Jesus. What mattered to him is that he got to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, let us aspire for that ardent desire to be with Jesus, dripping wet, soaked in tears, bruised, bruised from falling and falling again and again, beaten, burdened, and cry out to him like Peter did, Lord, save me. Save me from my sickness. Save me from my death. Save me from anxiety, from joblessness, from hopelessness, from ills of pride and strife, from unbelief. Whatever your big waves are that are causing you to sink and diverting your focus from Jesus, go out and reach out for His outstretched hand. He is stretching it out to you. His eyes are on you, telling you, Come. Is my hand too short to ransom? Have I not the strength to deliver? See, with my rebuke, I dry up the sea, says the Lord in Isaiah 50, verse 2. And finally, brothers and sisters, when was the last time He came to save you, rescued you, provided for you, healed you? If He did it for the Israelites, 
He will do it for you and for me. And if He did it before, He will do it again and again and again. And so, brothers and sisters, what made Peter rush into the water? It was his deep love and faith in Jesus. Brothers and sisters, dare the waves. God is greater than the raging and rough waters ahead. Psalm 29 10 tells us, The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. All you ever need to do, brothers and sisters, is to come to Jesus and step into the water where your miracle awaits. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Sister Tata, for always uh, being a vessel and a channel of the Lord's inspiration and His Word for all of us. Enum Community's vision is to spread the good news to the ends of the earth. If you want to be a part of this work of evangelization, please give your tithes, love offerings, and donations to any of the following accounts. We pray for all those who gave their tithes and love offerings. May the Lord bless you a hundredfold for your generosity. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our Lady of Belief. O oh dear Mary, Lady of Belief, sweet and pure, pray that your Son Jesus will, to innocence and holiness restore, the hearts and minds of long lost souls. Pray that the seed of glad tidings sown in our hearts will steer us to great hope, faith, and love. Pray for the vision and intentions of community and of the Church that with the Lord's watchful care and generous provisions, they shall all be. Pray that the polluted world and all institutions will, from a powerful outpouring of the latter rain, experience the blessings of fresh living water, the renewal of the Spirit, and healing of our land and of all nations. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is thy fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is thy fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is thy fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Illumination's Prayer Lord, I make myself available for the ministry of missionary evangelization on my knees or in the mission field, within our borders or on foreign soil, for a single soul or for the multitudes. Empower me for abundant soul winning. By your spirit, make me an instrument of your love and mercy, a witness bold and unashamed, an inspiring bearer of the good news. Send us the laborers, technology and resources to reach the world. Help us break barriers, overcome obstacles, and penetrate new territories that all the peoples of the earth may know that you are God and there is no other. 
and to all those we reach, Lord, raise them up to become your true disciples. Here I am, Lord. Send me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Horatio M. Perata Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, and grant eternal rest for those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition, but deliver us from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. Our Lady Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Father, you have called us come many times. But Lord, we may not have seen it or heard it. Forgive us for the times we failed to respond when you called us come forgive us for the times you were too scared to step into the water you lord grant us the grace the courage to look only towards you to set our eyes only on you and step into the water especially when you call us to come make us like peter the miracle seeker and we are ready to receive the miracles that come with this. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name, Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. of our online Elam gathering but of course if you were encouraged and blessed by this uh, gathering I, we encourage you to share this with somebody else who you think um, will be blessed or inspired uh, next week during the next live mm -hmm. and we thank you for staying with us and we hope to see you once again at our next online Elam gathering yes. so Please take care and God bless. God bless. Stay Bye. safe.
Oh